Hey everyone, and welcome for an album review. So it's about time I finally get back to these, right? So today we're going to be doing a review on Amuro Namiez's album, Genius 2000. So this is one of her older ones back from, yeah, the year 2000. And so I kind of want to cover a lot of Amuro Namiez's earlier work, and then we're going to get to some of her later albums that I haven't reviewed yet. So let's go ahead and get started. Track one is called Make the Connection Complete, and this is just your basic introduction track. And literally, it's just like the sound of her like logging into a computer or like America Online. It's almost what it sounds like AOL for those of you that remember it. And so kind of going on with the theme of like the future because it was the millennium it was happening in the year 2000 so it was a pretty big deal. Track two is Love 2000. I really enjoy this song a lot. It's it's very different from most of Namie's other songs but this has a really good beat to it and it's got a pretty good message. This song is perfect in the sense of it being the year 2000. You know, she's, they're saying right here. I'll get ready for system 2000. Can't you know that soon to come? I really like her vocals in this song. I think they're really good. It's like an eerie kind of song, but she's going through how the world is and why the world is this way. Why are people hurting each other? Are you ready for the system 2000 or the year 2000 where things can really change and people can come together? And so I think it is a, it's a good song. It's a beautiful message in the sense of how she wants the world to change and grow more, but you know, the world is the world. But this is a great song altogether. Track three is Respect the Power of Love. And this is the single I believe that the day it came out was when she found out that her mother was murdered. So really a hard time for her. I really enjoy this song. I think it's so fantastic. It's a really good message that I haven't heard from a lot of songs where literally going through everything she's going through in life at the end of the day just respect love no matter what and if you've respected love you've done good and that is something that when you think about it I mean the world does revolve around love essentially and so we all need to really respect that because without love where would we be so I really like the beat of the song. It's upbeat, it's positive, and I always, I tend to listen to this one a lot. Track four is Leaving for Las Vegas. This is like early R&B Namie, and I, I do like this song, but it's just, it's kind of strange to me, and it's, it stays in a much lower register throughout most of it, but it's, it's, it's a good beat but it's not one of my favorite songs that's for sure but I still think it's it's different so therefore I like it if that makes any sense and they're like ain't got nothing in my pocket but some lint that's a fact so I'm leaving for Las Vegas cuz that's where it's at she's talking about how she's having a horrible day at work and her boss is treating her horrible and she's just gonna go to Vegas because she just doesn't care anymore and I think a lot of us can definitely understand the feeling of not caring, especially if you've had a terrible boss at work. But I wouldn't say I'd want to go to Vegas <laughs> if I was having a bad day. That's not really where I would go. So, but for her, that's what works. Song five is Something About the Kiss. And essentially this song is that when she kisses this, her partner, companion, whatever you want to call him, she senses that there's something different about that kiss and she knows that there's another girl. And I really like this song. I think the beat, the instrumentals go fantastic with the message of this song where she's going through the thought process in her head and I think it just is, this is such a 90s song to me. Like just a classic 90s, early 2000s song and I really enjoy this one. It's definitely one of my favorites from her earlier works. Track six is I Have Never Seen. I love the piano intro of this song. I think it's such a beautiful ballad and it's beautiful with the message of throughout the relationships that she has been in, she's never seen a love like this where she loves this person so much but then it's, it's almost like they 
I think they're like denying her in a sense, but she's always ready to be there with them. And she's never had a love that hurts so much, but she loves them so much at the same time. And I just, I really like this song. The vocals are beautiful. The rhythm of it is stunning. And I just, I love that piano intro. I think it's fantastic. Seven is Still In Love. And this is like just your cute, upbeat song. I mean, obviously by the title of the song, you can pretty much guess the message. And I wouldn't say it's like my favorite song. It's kind of just your typical pop song. Da, 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 da. It's catchy, I think it's fun, but it's just your typical song. So I don't really have much to say about this one. Track eight is Mi Corazón, Termor. And this was such a unique song. I, the second I heard, hit this track, I was like, what is this? Is this Nami? Like, am I on the right album? And it really stands out to me. I, I like this song because of how unique it is and bringing in like that Spanish vibe. And it was just so fun. And she did a really good job, I, I have to say. I was pretty proud of how well she did with like saying like some Spanish words. But it, it's a fun song and she's realizing her feelings for like her close friend and how her heart beats for this person. And so I think it's kind of cute because I think at some point we've all kind of like fallen for one of our close friends. And so, yeah, I really like this song. If you haven't heard this one, please go check it out. Like she literally only sings it like during the Genius 2000 tour, but I think it's a really good song. It's definitely one of the more exciting ones that stands out on this album for me because of how different it is. Track nine is You Are The One. I'm not a fan of this song. Like, it's okay. And I could tell that she was trying to do something different vocally, but it just kind of throws me off. It's like, almost like it wants to be like gospel, but then not. And I, I, I mean, talking about how this person is still the one, but at the same time, the song confuses me something about how are you gonna tell this to your children it's just i don't know it's strange i don't i typically always skip past this one i'm just i don't know i'm just not really a fan 10 is called kiss and ride this song is also strange to me it's very like chill <laughs> super chill the song does not get much faster than this i mean at the end she just gets into like this rap but other than that it just stays like this and I mean it goes along with what she's talking about in the song like she's literally sitting in a car watching her partner walk away and she's just watching everybody passing by on the street and she's just like talking about the melancholy of life so the lyrics and the vibe it all goes well together but it I just don't really feel there's much of a purpose of this song it doesn't do anything for me and it's just there so this is just like a filler song to me that I feel is just kind of strange so I don't know maybe you guys like it I'm not a huge fan track 11 is things I collected and this song is all right again kind of a strange ballad I definitely prefer I have never seen over this one um, as the title indicates, it's talking about all the things that she has collected over time in this relationship and she's thinking about it. And so this song, it's, it's all right. I don't hate it. I definitely like this one more than You Are The One, but I'm still not like the biggest fan of this one. Track 12 is Next To You. I do really enjoy this song. This is like super 90s vibe. It goes right along with something about the kiss and it's catchy. I'll be next to you if you want me to. I just, I, I really like this one. I think it's a fun one. It's upbeat. It definitely catches your ear. I would say your eye, but your ear when you're listening to it. And so I, I definitely don't skip past this one. This song almost reminds me of like a, a Destiny's Child vibe. 13 is Asking Why. I actually do enjoy this song. I think it's it's like a it's not really a ballad it's just like a subtle again kind of melancholic song but I think that the rhythm of it is beautiful and it goes well with her vocals and 
I do enjoy the lyrics of this song a little bit more than the others in the sense of how this person in the relationship with her just keeps asking all these questions and she just wants them to stop asking why and just accept the love she has for them. And I enjoy the beat right here. Da, 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 da. I just think the change up of this song is really good and so it like it draws my attention more. And so I I still skip past this one but not near as much as the other ones. Track 14 is Give It A Try. I'm not really a fan of the song either. It's just like, it kind of bothered me because I felt like at the end of this album, she just like put all the ballads at the end. So by the time I got towards the end of this album, I was getting like really sleepy. And this song, like it's not, a bad song but again it's just I was already like gone <laughs> and so this song just makes me tired and which is basically more of a lullaby to put me out and I still like this one more than things I collected but I'm still not a huge fan of it it's just it's just a mildly okay song in my opinion Track 15 is our closing, not really song, but our outro. So this is ending the album and it's called Log Off. I hadn't said that yet. And I think it's a great way to end the album in the sense of we've come to a close and I get like kind of like a sense of reflection over everything that you've heard from this album. And it, it does well with the fact that we literally just had a bunch of ballads and so it's slowing things down as we come to an end. Overall, I thought that this album was all right. <laughs> the start of the album and the middle part I thought were really great. They definitely kept my attention and I was enjoying the songs, but it was when I got more towards the end, like I guess really the second half of the album, that I just kind of started to zone out <laughs> and not enjoy it as much. Uh, it brought my attention back once we got to, it was track 12, Next To You. That one brought me right back. I was like, oh, like a pumped up song again. Okay, great. And then it like went right back into ballads. And I was like, no, I'm getting so sleepy. Like, but you know, it's, it was still an all right album, but I wouldn't say that it's better than her previous two like the previous two albums were definitely very unique in the way that they stand out in the songs i feel like a lot of these were your more generic pop songs so there wasn't anything super unique about it it was just kind of fitting right in with the rest of all the rest of the pop songs at that time so you know good work with Namie. Some of the singles that were included on this album I think were really great, but if you haven't heard this album before, I would recommend at least giving it a listen, and if you have heard it, let me know your thoughts on this album. I haven't seen many reviews on this, so I really kind of wanted to get mine out there, let you guys know. So I will show you, this is my CD that I have of it, um, so let me open it up for you guys. So I've got in here, I ordered these off CD Japan, so here is the OB, and then we've got our little booklet here. She looks beautiful in this picture, of course, and I do like the butterflies, which goes with the, um, in the Genius 2000 tour, which I'll talk about when I review that one. <laughs> um, so here's a photo of her. She looks really pretty in the suit. It's funny to like see her wearing pants because you know later on like all she ever wears is skirts but yeah just looking all business attire that's a really pretty picture and then the other side literally just has all the lyrics for all the different songs so um, kind of a unique album in the sense of how it's like sideways. I always get confused how to put it back. And the CD itself is just this yellow CD. So, I mean, nothing too special there. And then just the back just has one little picture of her down there. So, 
it's an okay album. Not my favorite out of Amoto Namiyaza's collection because she's, de she's definitely got some gems in her collection that we will get to. So overall, guys, just all right. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I will try to get some more reviews coming your way, and I will see you next time.